It's a time for more packages from China. Let's go. <laughs> Hey hey, welcome back to the channel, it's awesome that you're tuning in. In today's video we are going to be taking a close look at the mini PC. This thing is actually really inny mini and this kind of cool mini PC because we can do all kinds of cool stuff when it comes to let's say putting this in let's say a different arcade machine or build yourself a compact design because this thing is tiny but it is quite a powerhouse when it comes for emulation itself. This may be the tiniest let's say mini PC you can buy at the moment. And you still have quite a lot of overall power and still some overall options. To begin with, you have an on off switch and the front USB 3.0. So at the back, we're finding two HDMI connections. If you want to use this thing as a normal PC, you can actually do that. Input for the power supply and a headphone jack out, RG45, another USB port. And at the side, we're going to be finding an SD card. So that's kind of cool if you want to use emulation and Bodicera. We can even put here an SD card and boot from there. So it gives us a little bit of extra options. In today's video we're going to be using this mini PC as an let's say emulation machine and we can do so many cool things when it comes to Windows. However, we have in here the power supply. This is just a 12 volt power supply with an USB-C connector. So to give you an idea, this thing is 3000 milliamp. So then having the manual and take note there, there are different versions out there when it comes to this mini PC. We have like the 5000 series Intel but also the N100. But the N100 is going to be way more expensive. And then having the HDMI cable, only one of them. But how can we actually play retro games through this mini PC? There are many different ways, but in this video I just wanted to showcase three of them. So first of all we're having over here the hard drive that we can plug into the bag over here. And we can just plug it in 3.0 port and I always recommend doing that because of the speed of the port and of course the connectivity of the hard drive. So this is lunchbox that we're going to be needing Windows for. We're not going to be actually using this because I don't want to use the Windows at all. No, what we can be doing is the Botasera. And with Botasera, we do have different options. You also get yourself like a USB drive that you can just plug in there. But in this case, we do have two options. So what is interesting with this mini PC, we can use an SD card. This SD card is going to be a very cool plug and play way. You can just plug it in, boot it from there through the BIOS. And we can actually have an emulation beast with just an SD card. However, if you're going to be needing a lot of space, this is not going to be a convenient way. That's the reason why I'm going to be choosing this hard drive. It's it's going to be the Kenhank hard drive and this is going to be in Bada Zero One. We're going to be connecting it, connecting it together and this way we have like 500, 1 terabyte and 2 terabytes of drive. And these things are quite cheap actually to buy and also to make yourself. The first thing they're going to be needing to do is powering on and figuring out which one is going to be getting us in the BIOS. I seriously like I'm just slapping every kind of button because I have no clue at this point which one. Ah, there we go. So the first thing that we're going to be doing is getting into, let's say, the BIOS itself with a good reason. To set up and drive like Botocera, we need to disable the Windows or at least make sure that it doesn't boot up. So when it comes to this, you have like boot priorities. In boot priorities, I'm going to be setting up the USB thumb drive, or in this case, the hard drive as number one. Another thing you can also check for, make it sure to actually have like a right boot up, is going to secure boot because this also gives problems. So set the secure boot to disable if possible. You're going to be needing this for having certain windows. But for this point, you're just going to be using the boot as you can see over here. So it has me set to the USB 3.0, that's it. Save changes, exit, reboot the device, and if everything is like it's supposed to be, it will boot up into the Botasera. And there we go. It will take up a little bit of a time to get into the boot itself, but then after a short time period, it's going to be booting up. If you do have problems with booting up, take, make sure that you do have the right version of Botasera installed. Did notice that some of the drive or images are a little bit too old when it comes for certain chipsets, when it comes to Intel or AMD Ryzen. And after a couple of times, I managed to get this thing to boot up. So one of the things I also do sometimes, if you don't want to use Windows at all, just disable it or remove the SD card. Loading can take a little bit of a time simply because of the different sizes of hard drives and what kind of stuff you actually added to them. And you can just see when booting up and will showcase all of the different systems that have been set up at this point. And I'm going to be doing a quick overview, particularly when it comes to, the, say, the higher end stuff, because that's going to be interesting trying to see if we can upscale it. 
going to be removing the keyboard from now because I'm not going to be needing it. It will automatically boot into the hard drive. I'm going to be plugging in the Xbox 360 controller because this is just an action input controller. And there are a couple of div different ones out there for a beta and stuff like that. But these things are absolutely amazing. And if it does work, you can just very easily configure it if you want to. The device has been booted up and let's go into the settings and showcase what you can actually see and do over here. So with information, I'm going to be giving you a quick overview of the specs of the device. So let's do a little bit of a nerdy mode when it comes to, let's say, the mini PC we're using. So the downside to these tiny compact devices, like 60 Celsius are ready and I'm not going to be doing anything at this point. So when it comes to the VMA memory, we're having 8 gigabytes, single channel. So over, I have an OpenGL 4.6. And we have the Intel Celeron N5105 running on 2 GHz that has actually a CPU number of 4. And yeah, the max frequency is 6900 MHz and OpenGL ES2.0. So having the Ultra HD graphics from Intel. So when it comes to specs, this is not like a fancy, like super fancy device. But when it comes to this, I just wanted to see what we can how far we can push it and what can we actually play with this. But when it comes to these mini PCs, even the old ones and this chip, we do have some overall nice performance and particularly when it comes to upscaling. So let's start off with some 3DO. And the reason why is because this is a system that doesn't run on the game sticks. Even if it's on the game stick or a game box, we do have a lot of problems with this. And with such a mini, cheap mini PC, you can just actually see that we can enjoy ourselves some return fire and some other classics. And that's absolutely awesome if you ask me. We have like a minor starter over there, but nothing very awful. 50 frames per second, only had explosions, kind of weird. But it goes back all the way to, let's say, the normal 60 frames per second. So yeah, when it comes to playing this game, this is going to be absolutely a lot of fun. I love Return Fire, by the way. And now with the mini PC and Battle Server, I do have the option to actually play this. It's amazing. Mamma mia. Yes. Get to the chopper, get to it now. Woo! If everything mapped up, yep, everything is mapped. <laughs> but let's get into something more of a challenge with a Thomas Wave. So when it comes to this particular game, you do have a lot of problems with those cheaper game boxes. And did notice that when it comes to some of these uh, images, you need to set up the buyers or other stuff. If you don't do this properly, you will have a little minor, minor hiccups. But going through the game, you can just actually see we have no problem whatsoever. This runs so much better than like a $39, let's say, game stick or whatsoever. So if we just want to enjoy some and Thomas Wave, that is even possible now. I just wanted to see how far we can push on Sega Dreamcast with the Dead Alive 2 test. And you can see with 720p, it's going to be pushing this thing to the limit. I did some Let's say frame drops notice it in the beginning, but now it's having quite a stable 60 FPS. So when it comes to let's say this tiny mini PC where this chip is already a little bit older, you can see that we can still push it to quite a nice, let's say, overall resolution. And if you do have struggles with some of the games, you can always put it to a different resolution itself. So I find it quite fascinating. Ah, there we have like a massive dip because I needed to load up a little bit of them an information for the next character to appear but beside that i think it's best a lot of fun to actually see how far we can push it when it comes to sick dreamcast i'm also using the flycast emulator not redream by the way but if you want to know how to set it all up you need to hold the a button in this case we're going to be going to the advanced game options at the right here we can find all kinds of different let's see emulators we're using libretto flycast at the moment going all the way down here we're going to be finding the option for rendering resolution. You can see it's 7720p. I've been messing around with it, putting it all the way to the full HD resolution, but that was way too much. There are different ways to actually go to, different ways to actually set it all up. You can also tweak with every single game to see how far you can push it. But with Game Boy Advance, we do have so many different ways that we can actually play. So this is absolutely a very awesome way because we do have like better SPS ratio now. Of course, if you're going to be playing this on a 60 inch screen or some kind with some bezels, it's not going to be looking any better. However, I think it's kind of cool. We can tweak, we can put all kinds of different retro filters on it if you want to have like an overall better gaming experience. But this is just normal resolution stretched and of course a bezel implemented and for 8-bit 16-bit and so many different handhelds this device is just more than enough 
But is, do you need to spend so much money on, let's say, mini PC for that? That is all the way, and the question you should ask yourself. But how about emulation of the Dolphin? And of course the GameCube. And when it comes to this, yeah, we're going to be pushing it to the limit. I think this is one more of the appealing things when it comes to a mini PC where you can have so many op awesome options. But getting into the game, you will notice some dips to the 50 frames per second, but this is just native resolution. And it seems to be working just fine on the normal Dolphin emulator. I've chosen this by the way, this character, and I have no idea how to actually play with this guy. But out of the box, this is kind of cool when you're looking at it, what you can actually do. You can always like mess around with upscaling by like showing you before, if you're having like less demanding, for example, non-3D games, like two-dimensional games. Maybe you can do a little bit of upscaling here, but out of the box, like, it seems to be working with Dolphin. But with MIM games, we can actually play even more than before. So where there is not a lot of it scanning going on in here, with native resolution. So if you just want to play the old school MIM games, you have an old PC laying around, Maybe you can try it and drive if bottle share on there. You don't really need a new PC for that because these games run on, on cheap game box or game stick. What I do love about it is that we have the bezel implemented so it looks so much better now. So one of the exciting things is that we can actually play some N64 without any problems whatsoever, or at least on native resolution. I think that is one of the cool things when it comes to a mini PC now. If you're going to be playing Cruise in the USA on a cheap game box or stick, it always has a lot of, a lot of problems. So if you do see some glitches, you can always switch between different emulators to get an overall better result. But we do run on the normal speed like it should be. So that's just great. But another thing I wanted to do to see if you're going to be having a more demanding game and maybe I try to be to do a little bit of an upscaling because that is also possible with N64. I'm mean, going to be playing that on upscaled, it looks so much better than the original native system. So where we know that it runs perfectly on native resolution, just wanted to see how far we can push it. I think now 720p enabled with some N64. The frames go all over the place, so that is one thing to be sure. So we're not running full speed, but it is playable. So another thing we can do is like do a little bit of a lowering down when it comes to this, the overall upscaling and having overall better performance but it's just fun to see how far we can push it when it comes to like a tiny device like this and take note there's no upgradeability and we're not even overclock it if you can if you can do that because this thing is getting already quite hot as it is we're moving on to the playstation 1 emulation and this time with the dock station we're going to be putting it in 1080p upscaling resolution and I've been playing a lot of lessons test out to playstation 1 on let's say game sticks and other yeah, just basic stuff but looking at this now on 1080p rendering resolution, this looks really great. And that is what I love about this mini PC about the server, that we can upscale it and push it to the limit. And if you're going to be having more power, like a powerful i5 or an i7, you can maybe try 4K and having even more fun with these older games. And I'm just flabbergasted how good it's actually going to be looking now. But let's get into some PlayStation 2 emulation. It's going to be on native, not like with the PlayStation 1 that we're going to be having 1080p. I would not really recommend doing that with a simple reason because some of the games are more demanding than Tekken. But I just wanted to showcase a game that is actually playable. And having such a, let's say, low power chip that we do have the option to play PlayStation 2 emulation. And of course, if you're going to be spending a little bit more money or searching for an older mini PC with an i5 or i7 in it, you maybe have the option to do a little bit of an upscaling. But beside that, it's kind of cool that we do have the option for playing some place 2 with a minor hiccup. PlayStation Portable with 4K rendering resolution with a basic PlayStation Mini. I just wanted to see what happens. And you can see that it doesn't have any struggle so far I can see. But this is a mini game, so it's just a basic two-dimensional game. I already mentioned before, with other systems like PlayStation 2, the GameCube, you can mess with, let's say, two-dimensional games. They're less demanding, and you can always do a little bit of scaling. But let's see what happens if you're going to be using a normal game with the PlayStation Portable emulator and 4K. So let's move on to a three-dimensional game, fighting game like Soul Calibur. 
And let's get into the game. Do do a quick touch bench to see what happens. I'm going to be putting this on 4K rendering resolution. And so far I will dip down a little bit with some parts of the game, but not to the point it's going to be quite annoying. So far, so good. So I'm fascinated to see how far we can push this crazy tiny mini PC with PlayStation Portable emulation. And if you wonder, can it run Doom? Yep, it can actually run Doom and many other ports. That's absolutely awesome. So Hexen, Quake, you name it, it runs perfectly on a mini PC, but also on these cheap game boxes and game <laughs> stakes. So that's not a thing. That's not why you should buy a device like this. Ooh, got a run button, that's nice. The conclusion is that this mini PC isn't all the chipset already as I'm even making this video. But if you're going to be looking into like what you can do with it, it's quite fascinating. The downside to this is that we do have this very tiny format, so upgrading is going to be near impossible. There's like a basic 128 gigabyte or 256 gigabyte in the inside for Windows, but that's it. Also, when you're going to be replacing it, it's going to be still very limited also with the RAM and everything else. And Botasera with many devices runs great on this. Thank you all for watching. Let me know in the comments what do you think of a mini PC. Would you consider it or do you going big? Are you just going to get something else that is bigger, better and maybe a little bit cheaper?